Namaskar, dear devotees and friends. The Wednesday evening we will be studying the Panchama Veda, the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. It is difficult to break the delusion. So, that is the topic that I have given the name today. And this is the conversation between Sri Ramakrishna and Bankim Chandra. And another Though the Sri Ramakrishna is considered by the millions and millions of people as the goal and also as the path of the spiritual life. He is the goal and he is also the path. And the path means he is giving the instructions. By following that instruction, one can reach to the same goal and where he will reach that God or Brahman or Atman is nothing but that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. We consider Sri Ramakrishna as such. By reading his words, his conversations, we are getting inspiration, directions for the spiritual life. But now when that person himself is trying to give instruction to someone, even then if he is not changing to what to say. That Sri Ramakrishna is trying to give the instructions, a guide, guidance to Bankim Chandra. We have to remember in a social status, Bankim was very high. He was highly educated, well established, recognized by the society. He was the deputy. Uh, 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 he was, he was, it's called the, that position he used to hold. So obviously you can understand. So he was great difference between Sri Ramakrishna and Bunki. And Bunki, Sri Ramakrishna, only we can say a Brahmin priest. So obviously in the beginning it is very difficult to Though many people are respecting him and Bunkim's friends and colleague, he was also respecting uh, Sri Ramakrishna very much and he has invited Bunkim and, and his friends, deputy magistrates, so to his home and Sri Ramakrishna also to introduce. Obviously, they were maintaining the courtesy, the gentleness. But at the same time, we are not getting very conv convinced with his words. We, all these pages that we have read and we will be continuing. So, but why? So, that we will see afterwards. See, I will read from the page 671, the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Those who build hospitals and dispensaries and get pleasure from that, are no doubt good people. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling that this is a type of people. There will be people who are not telling lies, not hurting others, cheating others, very moral, very gentle. But the spirituality is a different thing. Helping the people and getting joy into that is a different thing. Rajaguna. And Sri Ramakrishna is poor, but they are of a different type. He who is a real devotee of God seeks nothing but God. He who is a real devotee of God seeks nothing but God. Shall you stop doing good to others? Not at all. Sri Ramakrishna is not mentioning that. But we have to understand, I am reading the line again, that there is a chances to misunderstand. So, those who build hospitals and dispensaries, that means doing philanthropic work and get pleasure from that. This is the important word, pleasure. I am doing it. If I do not do, then who else will do? That means ego is working. And when there is ego, that ego actually separates us from God. So, when ego is working, no chances. So, the word pleasure we have to understand from that and no doubt good people 
no doubt good people, but the real devotee seeks nothing but God. That is the different thing. Pure soul devotees are in a class by themselves. Pure soul devotees are in a class by themselves. You cannot have real love of God unless you know that God alone is real and all else illusory. You cannot have real love of God unless you know that the world is impermanent. Only of two days existence while its creator alone is real and eternal. Keeping this truth in mind and based on this truth that God alone exists when I am working, I am serving the living gods and goddesses. At that time, if we do the hospital, build hospital and dispensaries, serve the patients, that will help me to realize God. The, in one of my classes, I mentioned about the one of our Swamiji, Swami Dayananda Ji Maharaj, who left the the America went back to India and started the Matri Sadhan and now it is very famous as the Sheba Pratishtan. The sh shall we not tell that uh, he, he was a good person but not realized God? No. I mentioned in that in the last part of his life when things were over he gave the charge, hand over the charge to someone else then how he used to live over there? He never took pride. He never boasted. He never got the pleasure by doing that. But he was happy that he could serve the living gods and goddesses. So these are two different things. Sri Ramakrishna is pointing to those people who are helping others with their egoistic way. You know, they are not the god lovers. Those who are devotee, they are completely different. And Sri Ramakrishna, he very nicely he mentioned, and so wonderful, is a class by themselves, the pure devotees. They will be so happy when they meet each other. Why? There is no ego. And where is the bond? The God himself. The look at him. He is so devoted that he has brought the flowers for the God. So they will love, they will appreciate. I brought the food, why he should bring it? So I, you should not offer this food because I have brought the food for God and that should be given and not anybody else. Is he a devotee? Love God? Let us ask them yourselves. So this is the way we have to understand. We do many things but at the same time as because we do not understand why, why we are not developing the spiritual love, faith and contentment, that is the question that we have to analyze our actions. At the back of all the actions that the ego is working, Sri Ramakrishna is teaching, he is teaching Bankim, but through Bankim we are all learning. Then he's saying, some people think that God cannot be realized without the study of books and scriptures. They think that, first of all, one should learn of this world and its creatures. That, first of all, one should study science. Then all laughed. The Sri Ramakrishna, he is telling the you know, he could read the minds, the people, most of the people. Even in the beginning itself, in the, this gospel, the Master Mahasaya, he was all wondering, he was asking one mate who was serving Sri Ramakrishna, uh, Brinde, the Master Mahasaya asked her, does he read a lot? Because he is telling the wonderful words, must have read from somewhere. 
and the bin they said oh no because Sri Ramakrishna was not having any books in his room. Bring the beautiful reports it and he say she says everything on her tongue. Sharashati, the Sri Ramakrishna himself, the, the God of learning. Because he is the Veda. He is revealing the truth. So obviously we need not to study anything. And Sri Ramakrishna is when he is telling this, that some people are thinking that and this world, worldly things, the science we should know, and through that we will realize God. Absurd. Because it is completely different beyond the time, space, and causation. Beyond the reach of any senses, any sense organs. Na tatra chakshu gachati, na bhag gachati, na manaha. In the Upanishad it says, the eye cannot reach and the tongue cannot explain. Even the mind cannot think about it. That is all beyond that. That is God. The Sri Ramakrishna said that. They think that one cannot realize God without first understanding his creation. <coughs> They go on analyzing creation, Big Bang theory, this theory, that theory, <clears throat> even the philosophers also. That is in one way good, but that has nothing to do with the God realization. God realization is completely different. Friend, again and again, the one point that Sri Ramakrishna again and again harping God realization. And what is this God realization? Just your sincere prayer to God. I like to see you, I like to know you, I like to talk to you, that much. And nothing else. Which comes first, science or God? What do you say? He is asking Bankim. Again, see the Bankim. Bankim is telling, I too think that we should first of all know about the different things of the world. How can you know of God without knowing something of this world? We should first learn from the books. This is the problem. You know that Kaushutiki Upanishad, we find that Brahma he is talking with the Ashalayan, a Rishi. One can realize God through Sraddha Bhakti Dhyana Yoga. Be he. Sraddha means the faith, bhakti, devotion, and dhanu yoga through the concentration, through meditation. So that is what the Brahma is telling to the Ashrayan. The scripture is nothing but the conversation of the realized people. They first realized, then they are giving those knowledge. To the disciples, here the Brahma, the first part, he is giving that instruction to the Ashalayan. There are two types of students, the Vedanta always say. The one is Bihanga Marg. Bihangam Marg. Bihangam means the birds. The, he will take from here and then fly and sit somewhere else. In between, it will not stop anywhere. So the very fast it reaches, the Bihangam Margam. How it is? They will hear the Mahabhakyas. And the, when they hear the Mahabhakyas, the great dictums, Tattvamasi, that's all. And they won't stop unless they realize it, to understand the true meaning of this Mahabhakya. Why this Mahabhakya? Because this is the truth. Tat Tvam Asi. Bhakyam is the word, it is the dictum. So obviously, this is Moham is great. It is the truth. I am that God. I am that supreme. The, the, the moment the Guru says, the realized one says, and immediately my mind is ready. So the moment the seed comes, immediately it starts sprouting. Yes, I can understand this. I am not this body. I am not this mind. I am not these senses. 
I don't belong to this world. All this world are temporary. And then his mind goes back to the root, the source, the Brahman, the consciousness. And he becomes consciousness himself. His mind, his consciousness merges. This is called Bihangam Margam. A complete faith in the words of the Guru. And as because he has already analyzed everything, his mind is ready, the Bihangam Margam. And second is Pipilika Margam. And Pipilika means the ant. It goes slowly, slow but steady. It will take time. The bird flies straight and realizes within no time. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna came and touched the, the young Narendranath. Immediately Narendranath went into the Samadhi and he realized the truth that everything is nothing but Brahman and that continued for three long days. Sri Ramakrishna touched many people. But they didn't receive that. They didn't realize that. So that is the way we have to understand the, whether our mind is pure. And what is purity? We know attract, attractions for these worldly things. That is purity. And when it is possible, when there is no me and mine, that sense, I and me and mine, that sense is not there. So that is called purity. Completely withdrawn from the world. It's a very, very difficult. We say like this, but it's not so easy. And because of that, I cannot suddenly say that I don't belong to this world and all these things are illusory. Not like that. We can, we can say, but do you feel like that? If we don't feel, then obviously, it is not true to us. And what is the Pipilika Marg? The ant mark, the ant way. They will Srabana, Manana, and Nididhyasana. Vedanta. The, the Vedanta, these are the things. Srabana, they will go and learn from the teacher. Then they'll go on pondering over that. The teacher told us this. Then is it true? Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling, first thing is to realize the God. But Bunkimi also telling that we have to understand his world, otherwise, how we will understand. So this is the way that they will all discriminate. And then pros and cons, whether it is good and not. So they will go on doing. But they will make the progress slowly because they are sincere. They are interested to understand God and realize God. So Sravana, then Manana is the discrimination. Oh, that is true. This world is temporary. I lost my grandfather, then my father, then I have become old. I am going to die. And so many changes. So like this, he will go on thinking. And by that way, his mind will get detached from the worldly things. And that means... Detachment from the world is purity. His mind will be pure. And the moment you are pure, you are blessed. Why? The revelation will come automatically. And that is called nididhyasana. They will be completely merged into meditation. So pipilika marga and bihanga marga. And then Ashtabakra, and why I am mentioning this? Majority of us, we like to argue all the time. And we like to discriminate in our own way. Though we do not know anything, our mind is bind, but all scattered over here. Even then when we talk about religion, we think that oh, we all know about it. Then these are the people, this is the problem with them. So the Brahma and the Ashalayan, the, uh, the, how they were talking and what are the teaching that we learn? So this is Sraddha, Bhakti, Dhyana. Sraddha and Bhakti and Dhyana Yoga, the faith and the love for God 
devotion and concentration on that particular point that is called Sraddha Bhakti Dhana Yoga. This is possible. Maybe we are slow, slowly we will make the progress, but we should be sincere. Pipilika Marga, the, like the ant we will go and realize. Or they are blessed one, they will just learn, listen and realize. I will quote from the Ashtabhakra Gita. Here the Ashtabhakra, that Ashtabhakra Gita we have already uh, read. Yatha tatha upodeshena kitartha satta buddhima. There are different type of people. Why we are discussing? Because though Sri Ramakrishna is telling, but Bunkim is not understanding it. So from the, that very moment, because as I was mentioning, we have to understand the social condition. Sri Ramakrishna and Bankim. Now we know Sri Ramakrishna. Now we know that he is nothing but God. Bankim was not knowing. And Bankim was not doing the tapasya and meditation. And he was not that way eager to realize God. But as a good, nice, gentleman, educated person, as a responsible, the, so, uh, the social person, uh, he was courteous, gentle, and he was arguing and trying to understand Sri Ramakrishna. That is the. And this type of, the, why he was not understanding? Because Bankim was not ready. We are not criticizing Bankim. We are trying to understand why when God himself is coming and is giving the instruction, why people are not realizing then? Because we are not ready. Ashtabhakra says, Yatha tatha upadeshena kitartha satta buddhiman. Satta buddhiman is a person of pure intellect. Again, the pure intellect means fully concentrated on God only, on the consciousness, and no relation with the ego. And Obviously, the mind is pure. Any instruction, anywhere, immediately, it gives the result. Yatha tatha, anywhere. Upadeshena, the instruction of the Guru, of the God, of the spirituality, that will react over there in that mind. Sri Ramakrishna told the story of a person, he was a landlord. Lala Babu, many of you have read that. The Lala Babu, he was a landlord naturally, the rich man in those days. So he used to live in that way. One day when he was going, suddenly he heard one mother. <coughs> they are the, they used to wash the clothes of the people. And they used to, uh, the, warm the water by burning, by lighting that dry banana leaves. And in that colloquial term, it's called basna, not basana, basna. And mother was telling the, the daughter, now the day is almost over, evening is approaching, you won't be able to work in the evening. Better light the basna so that the water will be heated, warm, and we can soak the clothes into that. Balaje jai in Bengali, she said, basanai agunde. Light that dry leaves. Now the word basana reached to his ear, this landlord, who was a pure mind, and who was constantly thinking how, how to realize God, the moment this word reached to his ear, he heard it as basana. Basana means desire. The Sanskrit word basana is desire. Agun de burn. And you have to burn the desires. Because the, there is not much time left in your life. Bala je jai. Bala means the day. The jai means it is slowly. The, the, 
evening is approaching, the darkness is approaching. So, not much time left in your life. Burn your desires and concentrate your mind on God. He learned that. He hard and learned that. Yatha tatha upadeshena. This poor lady, when she was telling to her daughter something which has no relation with the religion, but a man of religion, he heard this, oh, that is true. Now, there are not much days are left in my life. I should burn all my desires. I should concentrate on God. I should realize God in this very life. You know what happened? Sri Ramakrishna said, immediately from then and there, he went into Brindavan, the holy place, uh, holy pilgrim center. And on a plot of land, he started meditating and pondering on God, an austere life. And he realized that. Lala Babu Kunja, that place where he lived and did that Spiritual practice is famous as Lala Babu Kunja. I think they have Ramakrishna mission got that plot of land and developed some temples over there. So these are the wonderful examples. The scripture says, Yatha tatha upadeshena kitartha satta buddhiman. Satta buddhiman. If your mind is pure, in whatever way you get the advice that works. But if you are not, what happens? Ajivan api jigyasu. Whole life you will be going on asking question to why it is not happening, why that is not happening, why I am not yelling to God, why this thing, that thing, because you are not ready. Ajivan api jigyasu parastatra bimui hati. He remained ignorant. Why? Muiha, because the delusion. So it is so hard. The delusion never goes. What is the delusion? Thinking these worldly things as permanent. The source of joy, source of my life. That is the main, main mistake. Friends, it says that there are four types of intellect. The one is stone-like will never enter. If you go on telling them about the spiritual life, they don't bother about it. I was thinking when I was reading the Bunkim Chandra belongs to the stone like, no, we will come to know about that. He is not like that. We will come to know that. And another intellect is rubber type. Then if you are trying to put a nail into it, it goes little deep. But the moment you release, it comes out. It's not sticking there. It goes in and then come out. That is the robber. The first one is the worst, stone-like. Second, the robber-like, we can say bad. Third is the skin. It will go and go up to that as long as you are eating. So that much it will go and then stick over there. It is not going farther. Good, up to, we can say, that somebody, some guru is telling, and then we are listening, and whatever the guru said, that much it has entered. That is also good. So good. But the best is called oil-like. In the oil, it just drop the, anything that the, immediately it goes down. That's called the oil-like. It could say water. But why oil? Because there is nothing else but that mind. In the water may be the air bubbles, but in the oil, the clear, only that. So they say oil-like. So we should try to be that oil-like. Our mind should be like oil-like. That is the way it goes. Now let us read again from these pages where Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling that it is God first, not the books, not this knowledge of the worldly things. But Bunkim is telling, no, I like to know the world first then. 
Sri Ramakrishna. How, pa how much patience Sri Ramakrishna was having. While I was reading, I was getting <laughs> irritated. Why Bhanki is not listening to Sri Ramakrishna? But Sri Ramakrishna standing over there, sitting over there, talking with him, and constantly he, he was going on making this type of comments, but he is not angry. He is going on patiently giving him this idea. Sri Ramakrishna, that is one cry from all of you. But God comes first and then the creation. After attaining God, you can know everything else if it is necessary. So we will learn the world, we will read English, we will read science, then only we will go to God. The Sri Ramakrishna said, most of you are telling like this, but why don't you first realize God and then go for knowing it. It's nothing. When you know God, you know all else. So there's a, in the Upanishad, and one person is coming to ask this question. Kasminu bhagavo vigyate sarvam idam vigyatam bhavatiti. So he was a successful man in the society. Then he wants to know about one thing by knowing which everything can be learned about everything we know. So he is telling like this. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling, <coughs> when you know God, you know all else. But then you don't care to know small things. When you know God, you know all things. But then you don't care to. That uh, we know that Dhruva, the famous story, he went to the jungle and under the guidance of the Narada, he meditated and prayed to God only with one intention. His prayer was that my father should recognize me as a prince and should give all love and attention a prince is supposed to get. That was his intention. When the Lord Vishnu appeared before him and said, what is your prayer? Then he forgot everything that he was thinking. He said, God, I want to be with you all the time. Please be always be with me. Be with me. The Vishnu said, hey, you sat over here to go uh, to become a king. Oh, no, 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 I don't want that. So little things from his Sri Ramakrishna is telling. All this is nothing. So this is the way we learn from the scriptures, the small, sto beautiful stories of the Puranas that gives the illustration of these teachings. Same thing is stated in the Vedas. You talk about the virtue of a person as long as you haven't seen him. We go on talking about a person and, oh, he is so good, he can sing well, he is a very good person, and like these people will be talking. But when the person comes himself, then we are not talking about him. His company, we are enjoying. So that he is. But no sooner does he appear before you, than all such talk stops. You are beside yourself with joy simply to be with him. You feel overwhelmed by simply conversing with him. You don't talk about his virtue anymore. Here yes, Sri Ramakrishna is telling, suppose we are talking about the God. Oh, look at it. The God has created the sun, the moon, the beautiful sky, and this whole world, so many varieties of flowers. We go on and praising God. Suppose God comes before us. We are not talking about the world now. Oh God, you have created these butterflies. You have created these, that. We won't talk. That time we'll be looking at him, listening to him, and just his company, his association, will give us great joy. First realize God, 
then think of the creation and other things. So when we joined, when we were young, you know, that all energy and a lot of ideas. So we used to talk with the senior Swamis. The Swamiji, we should do this, we should do that. There are so many poor people are there. We should go and give them education and take their health care. They should all. Then <laughs> is it Ramakrishna Mission is doing all this. But remember one thing. What is fast? The cart or the horse? The horse carriage. The carriage should be fast or the horse should be fast? Horse. And that is God realization. Unless and until you are realizing God, understanding the true, and then it will be like a social work. Millions are doing the social work. Nowadays, the young girls are becoming very famous by saying something. They are very smart and very intelligent. They are taking one point and then the whole world is supporting them, acknowledging them. Hardly 15, 16, 12 years old, these little girls. So why it is possible? Of course it is possible. You will get the recognition. That is a completely different thing. But the God realization is completely different. Suppose we do a lot of good things in this world. Does it, it means that all the problems of the, of the world will be over? Can anyone assure that this world will be completely free from all the problems? There will be no disease, there will be no corruptions, there will be no bad people, there will, everything will be all good law, law abiding people everywhere in this world. Oh, I don't think it is possible. It's a pure dream. If some place is good, then there will be some bad. If this is all right, then that other will be. It goes on and on and on and on. Just go through the pages of the history. It is like this. What I should do in Hindi, there's a beautiful couplet. I learned it from an Indian soldier. He came to visit me in Andaman. Then he said, Kaate to kuch kam hi kiye. Gujre jidhar se hum. I like that very much. Mana ki izahar ko gulshan na kar shake. I agree that I could not change this old world, this universe, as like a flower garden, a beautiful place. No, it is not possible for me. But, kaate to kuch kam hi kiye. But I have removed the thorns from the path that I have traveled. So that the others who are following this path will not be hurt. Kaate to kuch kam hi kiye gujre jidhar se hum. The life should be like this. The God realization is the first. And while I am trying to realize God, I am helping others, serving others. And thinking that I am serving the living gods and goddesses. Sri Ramakrishna is going on telling. Then he is telling the uh, Balmiki story. Balmiki was the Ratnakara, the Ratnakara, the great decoit. Then afterwards, coming in contact with the great Guru Narada, the Ratnakara's mind turned and he started taking the name of God. The Japa, taking the name of God, is a very strong thing to clean our mind. How to purify our mind, our thoughts, name of God, Japa, receiving from the Guru, and the good person. And if you go on repeating that name, it will purify your mind. And the Narada told him, you better repeat the name of Rama. It was difficult for Ratnakara to pronounce that pure word, Rama. So he said, Mara, okay, it will con that will do. Do that. Then he explained, Ma means God and Ra means this world. So first is God and then this world. Then Ratnakara sat in one place, a very dedicated mind, strong mind. 
to decoids, but they are very courageous and very strong mind. The ones that decide that do that. So that decision, that strong mind, when applied for the realization of God, he was so successful. Went on repeating. Then afterwards, long afterwards, when his guru came back, he found that he's sitting in one place and the ants have covered the whole body. So it became the Balmiki, Balki from that. The first God and then the world. If you put 50 zero after a one, you have a learned some Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna going on giving the example to clear our mind. One is the first, God is the first, and then all other things. If you put the 50 zeros after one, you have a large sum. But erase the one, nothing remains. Only zeros have nothing to do. It is the one that makes the many. First one, then many. First God, then his creatures and the world. The one thing you need to realize God, why do you bother so much about the world, creation, science, and all that? Your business is to eat mangoes. This is Ramakrishna's favorite example. He used to tell it to many people. What need have you to know how many hundreds of trees there are in the orchard? How many thousands of branches? How many millions of leaves? You have come to the garden to eat mangoes. Go and eat them. Man is born in this world to realize God. It is not good to forget that and divert the mind to other things. You have come to eat mangoes. Eat the mangoes and be happy. So great advice Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is giving. So we have come to this world and our the human birth particularly as because the human has the capacity to discriminate between the bad and the good, between the temporary and the permanent, between the unholy and the holy. So it is only the human being has the opportunity to realize his own self. No other can do. The other beings cannot do this. Now, sir, that's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling as because you are born in a good family, educated, capable to discriminate, capable to analyze, capable to understand the temporary of this world and the permanent of the God. Why don't you turn your mind towards God and realize God? So he gave the example. You have come to eat mango. Eat mango. Why you are counting the branches and the leaves, then there'll be no time to eat the mango. But you know, the Bankim Chandra, and this is the characteristics of the Bengalis. They like fun and adda. Adda means they'll be having a one topic and on that they'll discuss sometimes serious, sometimes making jokes. Bankim is not taking Sri Ramakrishna's word that seriously. He is thinking that we have come and assembled in one place and after some time we will have the lunch in my friend's house. So this is the adda, the conversation is going on. Achoo, okay, this gentleman has come, he is telling. So he is taking it very lightly. So you can understand the Bankim is telling. Sri Ramakrishna is so seriously telling this. But Bankim is always, that is the characteristics the, of a different nature so he is telling. Where do you get the mangoes? He is asking. The Sri Ramakrishna is telling, you have come to eat the mango. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you have, truly you have come to eat the mango. Bankim knows it. He is a very intelligent person. He may understood. But in the mood of your adda, this is a Bengali word, it means go on gossiping, talking, and that the, the social, socializing, and different topics comes and sometimes taking seriously, sometimes with fun. 
it goes on. So he is having that mood. Where do you get the mangoes? He is asking. Sri Ramakrishna, he is not angry. With all patience, once again, he is going on. Sri Ramakrishna is adamant to tell the truth to Bankim because Bankim was a very nice person. So here is the Sri Ramakrishna. Pray to God with a longing heart. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna is not going to enter into that type of light words. Pray to God with longing heart. He will surely listen to your prayer if it is sincere. Perhaps he will direct you to holy man with whom you can keep company and that will help you on your spiritual path. Perhaps someone will tell you, do this and you will attain God. That means Guru, again Vankim. So, when you read this, you can understand the, the characteristics of the Bengalis. They are intelligent people and not that they are insulting Sri Ramakrishna, but in a funny mood he is going on talking. Sri Ramakrishna talked about the Guru. And if you go, and Sri Ramakrishna is sincerely telling about, Bankim is the how he is reacting. Bankim is telling, who? The Guru? <laughs> then he says, oh, he enjoys the good mangoes himself and give us the bad one. So all are laughing. So that is the way. Let's call the, the way of Adda in the Bengali. But Sri Ramakrishna is not giving up. Why you know? These people, the Bankim Chandra and his friend Adhar and also other deputy magistrates, they are the cream of the society. If they are convinced, then that will percolate up to the grassroots, up to the general people. If you go and tell this to the general people, they will understand that they will not like this, it will go on. But Sri Ramakrishna is going to those people and trying to give them, enlighten them about the spiritual life. Why? Then that will come down to the root. All people will understand. The whole society will be benefited. In the Bhagavad Gita also it says, the good people, all the people in the, in the, in the, high, uh, in the, as the leaders of the societies, Whatever they are doing, the ordinary people are all following them. So that is why the leaders of the societies, you know, who are the leaders of the societies? The writers. Those who are writing, publishing articles, writing books, and the speakers, the spiritual leaders, the good singers, actor, actresses, and the political leaders, because people are influenced by them. Any political leader, he is getting the support of millions and millions of people. What does it mean? That he doesn't know the million, that the million, they know him. And whatever he is doing, all will follow that. So that is why that we should understand when we are in a position in the society, we should be very, very careful. Yad acharati sreshta tattad ebi taro janaha. Acharati sreshta. That means the best people. These are our cinema actor and actresses. When in the cinema, it's okay. It is a drama, it's a whatever it is they have been asked to do. It. But in their personal life also, if they are pure, if they are truthful, if they are loving their own family and also caring for the society, inspiring the young minds to be truthful, that is a wonderful effect. But if they go on doing all the nasty things, oh, that other day we three friends drank that much of the wine, etc., etc., and they are boasting on that. That will also go a very bad effect on the society. Friends, 
So this is the appeal. The whoever there, the teachers, the students, they don't listen to their parents. They say, my teacher has said this. The teacher become, become their, their hero or heroines. They are their idols. They should be very, very careful. Because one mistake that ruins the whole society. The Sri Ramakrishna has gone to talk to these people. They are the leaders of the society. So he is going on trying his best. The God himself. It doesn't matter. It doesn't bother for him. But still he has created. And in this creation the human being. Among the human being. The intellectual human being. The good human being. So he is guiding them as best possible way. Why should that be so? When he is making the fun, everybody is laughing. The who guru, he will eat more the mangoes. He won't give me. So like that he is making the fun. But Sri Ramakrishna is serious. He is going on telling. Why should that be so? One must have faith in the guru's words. The guru is none other than Shachidananda. God himself is the guru. If you only believe... Oh, sorry. If you only believe his words like a child, you will realize God. Look at it. If you only believe the guru's word like a child, and what is that? Repeat the name of God and your mind will be purified. Then the Guru gives a name, name of God. Just have faith. Go on repeating that. Oh no, I have repeated, say five months, nothing is happening. Don't bother about that. Go on. It will slowly, slowly, it will purify your mind. What faith a child has. Now, Sri Ramakrishna is narrating how a child behaves. One should have that type of. One must have faith and sincerity. Hypocrisy will not do. This is hypocrisy will not do. To the sincere, God is very near. But he is far, far away from the hypocrite. The hypocrite, they are dressing themselves as a very religious man. And then the talking also, quoting from the scriptures. And because they have the command over the language, they'll be doing the language and saying, people will be mesmerized. And then sometimes you'll be doing the drama in the name of God, sometimes crying, sometimes lying down as if he's uh, having the God intoxicated condition. They'll be doing all those things, hypocrites. How you know the hypocrites? Because in real life they are not behaving in that way. <laughs> Whatever he says, he is not following that in his personal life. Don't believe them. Because they won't be able to guide you. Swami Vivekananda said, I can stand everything but hypocrisy. I can stand everything but hypocrisy. So this is are really great words that we whom we are going to that we are going to deceive God God is everywhere he can see us whatever we do and go and straight away tell God see this is my weakness that I cannot stop this please help me I want to realize you but at the same time I cannot stop all this as the Girish Chandra Ghosh said to Sri Ramakrishna. Girish Chandra didn't hide the, the bottle of that uh, the drink he was drinking. He came with his friends and he told, Do you like to welcome us? We are all drunkards and I can't stop this because this is my habit. Sri Ramakrishna was happy because they were not hiding anything. This is the reason. Shami Vivekananda was happy with the Westerners, Americans. You know why? Because they will never hide anything. The straight, straightforward they will say. 
So, this is my education, this is my family background, this is this, this is that, no hypocrisy. And as long as they will be able to practice, they will practice and otherwise they say, oh no, I like to learn something else, they will leave you and go. No hypocrisy. So, that is the reason Swami Vivekananda liked them. And he started Vedanta Society here itself. Because, the, and why we have become hypocrite in India? Right from the top and down to all people are telling something, thinking something else and doing something else. And the leaders are coming and giving the assurance and the listeners, they know that he is not going to keep his words, but still they are going on clapping. It's good, good that you are telling all the lies. Good, we are also, <laughs> both sides are good. So like this is going on. Why you know? Because we were under the subjugation for almost 800, 900 long, long years. And a servant, oppressed person, cannot express his original thought. He is constantly under the subjugation of that ruler who is ruling him or her. So whatever he or she is thinking, instead of expressing that, they used to say, yes, sir, you are so good. Yes, sir, you are doing this. All the time, they are thinking something, telling something, and behaving completely different way. So hypocrisy had entered into our blood. We have to overcome this. You have to be very clear. The I have come to do this. If you allow me to do this, I will be leading you. If you and this is the process I am trying to do. And if you are not, okay, forget it. No problem. So this is the way if we be, behave, then only the God's blessings will come. No hypocrisy. So this, what Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling, so don't be hypocrite. One must have for God the yearning of a child. We will conclude over here. So one must have for God the yearning of a child. The child sees nothing but confusion when his mother is away. You may try to cajole him by putting a sweetmeat in his hand. But he will not be fooled. He only says, no, I want to go to my mother. One must feel such yearning for God. So that is the sometimes when we are practicing spirituality, the many people, they appreciate the name, good name comes. So many things come. And that is the proof the God is there. If you take the name of God, Within few days, you will find all around you, your neighbors, your relatives, your friends will start. First, they will criticize. Then they will be completely avoiding you. But then, slowly, slowly, they will start loving and they will come and tell so many things to you. And that is the most dangerous time. Appreciation. They will come and touch you and give you the gift and let them serve you, to praise you, to have the company and slowly, slowly people, they forget that it is because of the God. They are not coming to me, they are coming to God. They are not appreciating me, they are appreciating the words that I am telling and that is nothing but the God's words. The gospel of Sri Ramakrishna that we are reading and trying to analyze here and there according to our understanding. This is nothing to do. This is only the God. It's God and God. And we like it. Why? Because the God's word. Friends, we will continue this conversation between Sri Ramakrishna and Bankim Chandra. And I will, we will notice how the God's is influencing the Bankim Chandra. So, up to this today, so we will chant this mantra and conclude. Let us offer our pranam to Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Niranjanam nityam anantarupam bhaktanukampa dhritabhigraham vai 
ईशावतारम परमेशमिद्यम तम राम कृष्णम शिरसा नमा ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ तत्सत्म कृष्ण अर्पणमस्तू